My partner likes shopping in really, really sort of high-end stores and I always find the experience very uncomfortable when I'm just waiting there because I'm not actually purchasing anything there. They're not quite like a normal store, they're sort of like something else and sometimes they're a bit inhuman. So I was spending, basically I was spending a lot of time there and then I suppose the questions of the stories of sort of aging out of your 20s and then moving towards something that maybe you once aspired to, but reality maybe shows you that that's not real or not sort of happening, then kind of came together into the story. Yeah, your characters are often alienated by their work um, or even alienated by the work of unemployment. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Um, so I've done lots of work in, say, customer service, but often in parts where I'm either a ghost or I'm something digital. Like people often will think that they're dealing with a computer, but it's actually someone behind the computer talking to them. I suppose more and more work is becoming sort of flexible. Um, so we have all of this talk about, you know, flexible working, that we can tailor our time, that we're all freelance workers. But what that ends up creating is a very sort of oh, disembodied experience of sort of floating between anything and everything. And I think that that sort of comes through in the characters. But I think most people are quite alienated by their Definitely. work. Definitely. But I feel like there's not a lot of art exploring that specifically. Yeah. Well, I think it's sort of, sort of funny in that way because I sort of think, even if I think of my stories, um, I don't think they're necessarily doing anything that new. I kind of think it's like maybe like a Jean Rhys story, but just transposed in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. um, a bit sort of like that. But I do think it's something that people are alienated, but then they don't necessarily want to talk or articulate that they're alienated. It's sort of just a pervasiveness. Yeah, it's and like I a think, baseline. Exactly. Yeah. And that's sort of the new normal. Mm -hmm. And I think that fiction is kind of a fun space because you can put it into relief and it feels mm -hmm. really stark. In one of your reviews of a Tessa Moshfe's short story collection, you talk about the release of psychic bonds in writing a short story? Yeah, so with a short story, I think I think there is an aspect which in the, the novel you kind of take on society in a more mm. broader sense and you kind of, uh, by nature you do because there's so many voices in a novel. There's no sort of one contained moment or, or thing. And I'm not even talking about whether or not it follows more than one character, it's just larger. But a story is so small and short, uh, you have to do sort of something else. Mm. And I think there's an aspect, particularly in short fiction, and maybe it's not short fiction that everyone writes, but I think especially in, say, in particular, Atessa Moshveg's and even possibly what I'm trying to do, but whether or not I reach it is sort of a question, is that when I'm writing short stories or short fiction, it's sort of like we're always wearing masks all the time. But when you're doing that, you can just kind of tear the mask off and, and sort of expose something underneath it. And I think that that can be quite liberating um, because you can sort of say, you know, X, Y, Z is bullshit, but you don't have to have the consequences of sort of articulating that as yourself. I wanted to also ask about uh, humour in your work because I find your stories hilarious. And I often find that when I'm reading a story, a mark of whether I engage with it or not is the fact that whether or not I'm internally or externally laughing. So I would say that I'm never really writing and sort of thinking about like I'm writing a, j a joke here or I'm writing a pun here but there is something that you know the writers I love are really funny mm. the writers I love are very tragic comic um, you know For whether example. that's Gagol or someone like Amy Baradale or even Atessa Moshfeg they're sort of uh, they're sort of showing something absurd in life and they're often dealing with something that can be quite tragic or bleak or depressing but there's something still funny about it and I think that mm. that's kind of exciting. Uh, it almost like it opens up a, a two spaces because on one level a story might be very bleak but on the other it's funny and when the two are sort of together it kind of balances and you're sort of in a space where you can think about it without having to be too depressed or something like that. I think all of your characters although they're intensely cerebral they are also very engaged with their bodies and often your stories have like these moments of like abject horror in them which I really like and I wonder if you could speak more about writing bodies and like yeah I think 
When you write the body or especially an abject body, it sort of has to do with an awareness or maybe a preoccupation. Like I'm never really thinking about bodies when I'm writing, but they do come in because, and I, and I think it's sort of fascinating because we often live, especially now in kind of a mediated existence in which we kind of project ourselves digitally. Mm -hmm. So we might exist um, on photos of, on Instagram or as, you know, tweets on Twitter or even on Grindr is sort of like a photo and then a profile. Mm -hmm. But in actuality, our bodies aren't static like an image. They don't work like that. And they often break down and do really disgusting things when we sort of least want them to do those things. Mm -hmm. But that's the mortal condition. Um, so I think bodies become a thing that happens in fiction, whether or not that's description, but we're tying the story down to, at least in my stories anyway, tend to follow one character mm -hmm. and that character inhabits a body. We all inhabit a body and then the fiction becomes inflected by that. Mm -hmm. With Com, there's something in particular about an abscess that mm -hmm. pops because so much of that uh, world is, you know, skincare routines, mm -hmm. looking beautiful at all times. Um, uh, even the talk of even the store being like a magazine image, like it, everything's flattened. Mm -hmm. There's not really a human element in terms of a body. And then to have it that the character sort of does have this growing abscess and then is treating it with a chemical peel face mask. There's just something that's really, it's really, really funny, but it's also quite high stakes in the environment and in the story. Um, and I do think that the body sometimes like has to intrude and that makes it more exciting. What are the questions that you ask yourself when you write or that you continue to ask yourself throughout the writing process to sort of get to where you need to be? The big question I sort of always ask is, is the shit? <laughs> because that's the thing I suppose that uh, maybe doesn't terrify me when I'm writing, but I'm really, really, uh, I'll rewrite and rewrite and rewrite because I want something to be tighter or, or stronger or funnier, or I want it to do, I want the story to be able to do something that it's not currently doing. Um, the things I do really think about a lot have to do, I guess on a sentence level, whether or not it flows and whether or not I suppose the story is making sense, not in a way of like, um, you know, one plus one equals two, but in a way it's like, is something actually behind the story that's operating in a way that I never really, I don't really want to tell the reader anything. I don't want to like give an answer, but I want something to be there that the reader can then experience and kind of see for themselves. The fiction I like and the stories that I think are really incredible are ones that on a sort of sentence level are doing something that's really fun and mm. kind of resistant and maybe have some kind of energy beneath them that you kind of can't fully articulate. Mm. And that's what I kind of want to trap and put in a story. And what are the things that you wish someone told you? You don't have to obsess about publishing. Mm -hmm. Really, you should just be thinking about the work because I think when you're a young writer, it, there's kind of like a, an excitement about publication or that's how you are a writer. And I think that that, I think people just waste their time thinking about that. Of course, at some stage you have to think about publication, but really it's the art where the exciting thing's happening. Mm. And if the art is at a certain stage, the other things will sort of take care of themselves, I think, mm. to an extent.